So before we get any farther, this is a video that requires a backstory because there's a whole lot of moving parts that led to this situation. So this RV is now owned by a gentleman named Rodney and Rodney bought this RV to be his home. Now at the time of filming this, he had another RV and that RV unfortunately doesn't run. It's a diesel engine with a bad engine. It's a very, very expensive thing to repair and he knew very well he was not gonna be able to save with the money to repair that and get that RV running again. Now that RV was at a homeless camp in town that the city was kind of allowing to happen on a certain road and uh, the city had finally decided that they were gonna clean it out, get rid of that homeless camp and uh, make everybody move on. Now unfortunately for the people whose RVs don't run or, or camps are not mobile, that doesn't leave them with a whole lot of options. Now Rodney knowing his RV was gonna be way too expensive for him to be able to afford to repair, uh, he's been saving up his monthly VA checks for a few months ever since the city uh, told all the people living in this homeless camp that they were gonna clear it out and they had a deadline. Uh, he's been saving up all his checks to be able to buy a different RV, a smaller RV, a, a gas engine cheaper to repair when needed RV so that he could be mobile and kind of just move around as is needed as different areas get kicked out, cleaned up, whatever. So the deadline for everyone at this homeless camp was midnight the night before this happened. Uh, that was when the hammer was dropped, anything that was still there was getting cleaned out and everybody was out of there. Luckily for Rodney, being a veteran and disabled, the city granted him and a few others who in that same situation an extra week of time. And after hearing that, I told Rodney, if you can find somewhere for your other RV to go, I will tow it there for free. Now I can't tow it out to China Hat Road in the woods where we do all the cleanups. I can't just tow it to another random city street. It has to be a place you are allowed to have it, but if you can find that, I'll do it for free. And like you said, which unfortunately I, I knew, there's no legal option for for these people. It's It's either go out into the woods, which you've seen the cleanup videos from that, or just bounce around city streets. That's really the only option they have. And it really sucks because he, the RV he's living in, it's actually clean. His camp there, I, I saw the pictures of it. There's no trash, there's no nothing. But he has no legal options of where to go, so I can't tow it somewhere else for him. And that's why he's been saving up his money this whole time uh, to buy an RV that is mobile and that when it breaks down it is cheaper to repair. So he got right down to the wire saving up his money very last minute went and bought this RV uh, so that he could get it back in time to clean out what he needed out of his other one into this one before the city towed it away and scrapped it which is, is what's going to happen to all those RVs that got left there. But unfortunately, as you see in this video, it broke down on him on his way home and he never made it home with it. But luckily, as far as his, his short-term problem goes, which was the broke down RV, I had just finished towing a big rig over to the, the Willamette Valley and was headed back over the Cascade Mountains in my rollback uh, out there in no man's land when I come upon this RV broken down half in the travel lane of the highway and there's a guy standing there on his phone and I know there is no phone service anywhere remotely close to where we are. So I pulled over back down to him and uh, asked him like, you broke down, you need help. He's like, it just died on me. I'm like, okay, I got it from here. Just, and I jumped out and started getting it loaded up as quick as I can. And then you'll see where we go from here with it. All right, we're just uh, heading home from a job and came across this guy in this RV, broke down here on the side of the road in a really bad spot where there's no cell service. So he's totally screwed. We're gonna help him out. So you just bought this thing? They're trying to get it home? Where did you were asking 3500 for it? Where where? Where'd you buy it at? Uh Gates. Gates? Okay. It's like Gates Gates. Not that awful far. Well. No, but Okay. 
Oh, I got a mess going on right here, doesn't it? I forgot I had this sling wound up in here. Yeah, you got off. What's that? Uh, quite a ways still. This is just going to stay here for now. Yeah, you're in a spot, very bad spot of service, so. Then I'll crawl under the front until I make sure they all go by. No, um, I'll get this part. Okay. Yeah, that'd be a little, well, this truck can do it, but it's a little tougher. I hope it doesn't drag. It's going to be close. Alright, it's just touching the, the hitch, so that's fine. Oh, here come some cars. Get the bed up that way those flashing lights are visible okay they're moving over problem is once that's on the deck my strobe lights up top go away and if the bed's still down you can't see the flashers on the back of the truck so get the bed up as quick as you can so those are visible and yes i'm on this side of the truck so that i can see what's coming Because while it was down behind the truck, I wouldn't have any visibility of traffic coming. Okay, wow. What can we help to that's not super rusty?
Hey, go ahead and hop in. this drink. Oops. Really? What the hell? coming at the moment so I'm just gonna get this on so we're not relying so much on the wind and here comes traffic so let's go here you go my name's Roger I'm Casey we're gonna get up to a wide spot and finish tying that thing down but we're gonna get out of here <laughs> so you're trying to get back to Ben? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that's yeah. that's where I'm going, so no problem. I'll take you there. I don't know if I got enough to be your team or whatever it is. I'll make up Oh, to don't worry own. about it. It's on it's on it's on the house. I got a couple hundred bucks. But don't worry about it. <laughs> well, this one's on the house. I'm going that way anyway. All right, well, we're gonna get the other side of this tied down and then we'll get back to Ben. Okay. Let's get two more hooks out. That was probably really loud if you're wearing headphones, but okay, a little safer spot here, and it's in the shade. Yeah, I was uh, I was coming up the hill down there, and he was sitting there half in the lane, and uh, it's an area of no service, so he's got his phone in his hand, but I know he can't call anyone. He was trying though. So, luckily, I had an empty truck. I pulled over, back down the hill to him. Once I got all four chains on this, I will slack that winch off. And I'm sure the camera's all over the place, but I just stuck it on a, uh, like, oh, it's basically a big necklace. I'll show you it later when I get a chance. So it might be swinging around and pointed at who knows what, but it's totally got it now. Grab the axle, go to this side, make sure there's nothing on the axle, 
There's not. I want to pinch brake lines or something. Okay. Glad we're off the road before all the trucks come by. Okay, chain, chain, chain with no binder because we used the winch, but that's okay. Uh, it's back in park with parking brake on. Oh, let me click on PTO. My remote battery died, so I took it out. I didn't have another one. See the winch up there go slack. And uh, I was gonna stop uh, after I dropped off the load I was just doing, I was gonna stop at the gas station, get some snacks and a new battery, and I burned out the battery. So I had to do that. I'd much rather done that with the remote from inside of there, but as far as winching it up, but we got it either way. Let's go. Okay, you ready to get out of here? Yeah. I guess I'm glad you pulled over. I've always said your God watches over my ass. That's the only reason I'm still alive, you know? I've been <laughs> 20 years in the Army. I've got a pink finger on this side. I got this one just going to my heart on this side here. Well, then the last thing you're going to be doing is sitting out here in the 90 degree day yeah, and in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you know, when I don't do it, I don't, I don't stress. I just say, wow, well, you know, it is what it is. It is, you know, see what we can do about it, you know? And, and that's, you know, and, and except, you know, when it becomes bigger than I am, that's when you say, okay, God, this is your baby. I, I can't do this. It's your problem now, okay? To fix it. <laughs> and, uh, then you pull over. <laughs> well, we'll get you back to town. I was going to check the height with my tape measure, but the ladder doesn't go all the way to the top. So, uh, apparently he just bought this thing. Made it about 30 miles down the road from where he bought it, and uh, now it, it died on him. This looks like it's over height. We'll see. Okay, we're about four inches over height, um, it looks like, which is close enough for me. So, oh man, how did I do this? Look at this. These things I grabbed onto to climb up. I'm gonna fall. This is bad idea, bad idea. Please don't rip out. Whew. How did I get up here? I'm way better at going up than going down. Okay. So, deck height is four feet. This thing is like 10 foot two to 10 foot four, somewhere in there. Which puts us at 14, under 14.6. 14 14's legal, but like I said, close enough. Can you hear me? I said I'm going through sisters right now. Good time for the scales to be closed. Yeah. It's about an hour late right now. It's almost, yeah. it's 115, so almost an hour late. But they'll still be there doing their thing. You know the name of the clinic? Uh, well, what it, all I know is how to get there. You know, I can't take, I can't take, uh, straight off there.
Yeah, we're gonna. We're just gonna pull you over yeah. right here. I'll walk right in there and I'll yep. keep the building. Thanks again, buddy. Yeah. Sure, uh, I can't tip you or nothing. Uh, you got a business card? Yep. Okay. Yeah. 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 Good, perfect. Here's my card. You get in there, take care of that. I'll take care of this. And the repairs on this, I'll take care of too. Oh no, you're not. Yep. So me and all the wonderful people inside this little camera right here, we like to help people. We're gonna take care of you on this. Bless you, man. You got my card, call me and let me know how this goes if you need anything else. Okay. Okay, you get good. He's got dialysis three times a week. He's now we're about an hour and a half late for his appointment. And he can't miss it. So uh, just brought him straight here. And now I'm going to take care of this RV for him. So that's one less thing he has to worry about. So let's see if we can get out of town without knocking down any power lines. Okay, let's, uh, let's get this thing off of here. We're dropping our airbags to get some more clearance under the back end. I'm going to snug that winch up you see up there. Okay, now if that's tight and this one's tight-ish, I can take off all the others and this thing will stay in place. Okay, neutral. Parking brake, I guess, does not work. Oh, yeah. That doesn't work. I said I'd show you my camera setup. There it is. You just ride like right here on my chest. Okay. Now we'll winch out. Slack our chain up there. We're gonna hook that so it's a safety in case the winch kicks loose while I'm getting this. Even though we're just there for that short little time. Undo this. There we go. Now, That back end is going to drag, I can already see it, even though I got my airbags dumped. But we can get tricky. Oh, it might go. It's so close. Do it. Do it. Oh, man. Okay, well here's what we can do. Put this back in park. Grab our wheel chocks. These probably aren't super necessary, but I don't want to buy this fence. Now we can free spool our winch. 
and I'll pull forward a little bit. Now we lock our winch back in. Throw the tension back on it. Get these out of the way. Put this back in neutral. By pulling forward. By pulling forward, I got this farther down the ramp, which kicked the back end up. Now let's send it through the fence. Perfect. Free spool. Loosen. Park. Helps when you go the right way. Fun way to do it. I just noticed he forgot his hat in here. I don't know what all these pens mean, but I'm sure they're special to him. So we're gonna put that in his RV and make sure he gets that back. Okay, so we got uh, we got his hat back in the RV for him, so that once he gets done with his dialysis treatment, he can uh, he can get that back. And then uh, talk to the mechanic here. His name is Caesar. Uh, really nice guy and uh, the reason the reason we brought the RV here is uh, Caesar has worked on vehicles for Rodney before so Rodney knew him that's who he wanted working on his his RV and uh, So I, I showed up I told Caesar who I was what was going on and that I wanted to cover this for Rodney uh, So it's one less thing he had to worry about and and Caesar's was fully on board saying he's a really good guy and he deserves it which I am very happy about because I'm afraid um, <laughs> say something like that one time when the guy seemed like oh that piece of he's out of prison or something uh, but no he said he's a very good deserving guy I just spent an hour and a half with him and uh, I felt like he was someone I wanted to help out and uh, you guys you guys here and especially you patrons are are the reason I get to do this and I cannot thank you enough for putting me in the position and allowing me to do this for people it's it's very satisfying and it's something we are doing together um, you guys are the reason this happened so thank you and that is the point where the camera battery died but what i was trying to get at was 
thank you guys for being the ones who put me in a position to be able to do something like this for other people. We're going to cover the cost of the repairs to that RV for Rodney. Uh, if it ends up being just a, a cheap little fuel filter was clogged and that was it and something cheap, then, then we'll put some new tires on it because I'm sure it's got some old dry rotted tires on it. We'll just... We'll do what we can with our budget for the month on Patreon, which is $2,000 this month, uh, to make sure we alleviate as many worries as possible for him. Because this is exactly what I wanted out of this Patreon project, where we, we find someone who has a need of some kind, and we together help alleviate those needs or assist in any way we can. And, and by doing that every month, we just continue to try to make the world a little bit better place not only by helping that one person but by spreading the idea that you can help people what whether it's it's through something like i'm doing here or just you helping a random person in some or any way that you can every little bit matters and every bit of help truly does change something for someone and the smallest thing for for someone to do could be life-changing for someone else like even if all i did was tow him into town and be done that was nothing for me to do. I was on the way back from another job already. I was going where he was going. That took very little time out of my day and very little effort in all reality, but that in itself could have been just life-changing for him in the situation he's in. So you don't know how much of an impact your efforts can have on someone else, and it is very well worth it to find out. So thank you guys again. I, I cannot wait to just keep this going farther and I will keep you updated on Rodney, uh, what we end up doing and all to help him out and where we end up with this. So thank you guys. We'll see you on the next one.